y'all, I'm Church of Caboose, and in this video we are comparing the multiplayers of Call of Duty Modern Warfare and Destiny 2. Now why would I do that, might you ask? Well, Call of Duty Modern Warfare and Destiny 2 kind of tend to be two of the more popular first player shooters uh, of the end of 2019 so far, so it seems to make sense to compare the two, but mostly a other uh, YouTuber, which you might recognize from one of my past videos, named Two Piece Puzzle, he's mostly a Modern Warfare guy, and he and I were debating about which one was better slash takes more skill to play modern warfare or destiny 2 and as i get up my wife's like hey maybe you should just make a video talking about the multiplayer of both games is kind of just kind of comparing them a little bit and uh with each section we'll talk what i wish like the game had from the other game and uh so like for example we're gonna talk about modern warfare first so at the end of it i'll be like this is what i wish modern warfare had that call of duty does that kind of thing so let's go ahead and kick this on off with some call of duty all right first up we're gonna look real quick at this uh, home screen as you guys can see there are a ton a ton a ton of options that uh you can scroll through along the top we're just going to only talk about this first one with quick play and all the different playlists and a little bit about the next tab weapons. The rest of it are stuff you guys can figure out. Just keep note that we've got uh, operations and operators that you can choose between. So first up, look at this playlist option. So if you go to quick play and then go over to filter, you can pick what playlist you want to play on core or hardcore mode. So it's kind of nifty, you get to choose exactly what you want to play. If you only want to play one game type, you can just select that one. If you want to rotate between however many you want to rotate around, then select the ones you want to rotate between. And then the difference between core and hardcore, hardcore basically you die faster and you have no radar unless you have a kill streak. Otherwise, not much of a difference. And so it's really nifty that you get to pick exactly what you want to play on. I really like this aspect of Call of Duty a lot. It's really nice, especially when you're working on those mission objectives to unlock weapon variants. Then if you scroll down, you kind of see we've got some other playlist options. These tend to say semi-permanent, but there are more, I guess, in-depth or unique playlists that some of them are around only for a temporary time, such as the bomb you see drop zone and shoot the ship are new playlist options. So they are not around forever, but they bring a unique play option to the game and they can rotate out. And then you have things like Gunfight, which is more competitive, it's 2v2. You got Ground War right above that, which is kind of like Battlefield meets Call of Duty. You got a Snowball Fight, this is definitely a temporary one. It's basically throwing snowballs and punching each other with fists to win. It's, uh, and it's similar to Gunfight, other than you have snowballs and fists. And that's kind of more or less what the home screen is. It's just really detailed and you get really nitty gritty about what you would like to play. And I just really like that a lot as opposed to having to play only control or a mix of random stuff. You're really set in Destiny with what you have to play. Whereas Call of Duty, you get to pick and you have everything as an option as opposed to every once in a while. Okay, so we're going to talk real quick about operations. Um, operations, they let you pick mission, mission objectives so you can unlock weapon variants. That's all they are. And then uh, weapon loadouts, they let you pick out all the different attachments. You get to customize everything. Your weapon itself levels up. As your weapon levels up, you get different attachments. So here's just a look at one of these weapons. And I want to talk a little bit more about the mission objectives and the operators as the gameplay is kind of scrolling through all these different perks because you don't need to see or hear me tell you what you are also seeing. So the mission objectives are kind of like weapon quests from destiny you just activate a mission objective it'll tell you what weapon variant you are trying to earn and a weapon variant would be something like say you have an ak-47 that's the base model a weapon variant gives you different attachments that comes on it it's slightly different perks it kind of it's more or less like a different rolled weapon kind of like destiny 2 but not as drastically different so that's what the uh, mission objectives are and then you have a couple of daily options where you can get extra XP, maybe you earn some loot like an emblem, that kind of thing as well. 
And then you have operators. Operators are basically different avatars. They don't really do a whole lot for your gameplay. They don't give you different abilities. Um, the only thing I suppose you could probably argue for the operators is that if one has a ghillie suit, it might then blend in a little bit more, so perhaps you're more hidden. But that is not necessarily like its ability. It's just kind of like because of how it was coded and how that avatar was created. So now let's just talk a little bit about how you play Call of Duty, what I like about it, perhaps what I don't like about it, as well as what I wish Des or Call of Duty did that Destiny does. Alright, so now uh, how do you play Call of Duty? Well, if you want to be the guy that ticks everyone off, camp. Call of Duty is very well known slash hated for campers. Campers are people that like to pitch a tent in a little area, set themselves up very defensively to be able to stay in that area for quite a while and more or less just sit in one place. They are known for really irking off everyone because they just stay there, they crouch, they find all the ways to stay hidden and you tend to hit X to not see where they are hiding because you skip the kill cam and they get you over and over. So if you want to tick people off, there is one way you can play Call of Duty. For the most part, it is very chaotic. Most maps are relatively small. They're, I would say they're bigger than Destiny 2 maps. At least they feel a little bit bigger sometimes. But you also have options of picking ones that are tiny. And due to how fast you can kill anyone with anything, like there's not really much of like cat and mouse like getting away, taking some damage and leaving. That does not ha that does not happen very often unless your opponent is a very bad shot and is only shooting you like in the pinky toe or something. So if you tend to just like see someone or not see someone and die. And most of the time you don't see where they come from. So there's a lot of people moving, trying to get around the map. There's a lot of people trying to hide and keep their zones down. And then you have the games that play to objectives, which much like other first person shooters like Destiny with objective play, you do have people that don't play much to the objective because they're working on getting kills or they're trying to get their kill streaks or something of that nature. Now, speaking of kill streaks, that is a huge part of Call of Duty is earning those kill streaks. We did not show you in the editing menu, but you are able to choose different kill streaks that are varying upon how many kills you have gotten without dying. The more kills you have gotten without dying, the more awesome and rare the kill streak is and the closer down to like three kills without dying tend to be more common things like care packages which have a chance of dropping really any kill streak but tend to give you the easier ones like uavs and you can get all the way up to like an ac-130 gunship where you're shooting rockets and machine guns and whatever that is that's in between the two and at the map and so like there's a, a whole, whole lot of gameplay built around trying to earn those kill streaks which brings a hugely different aspects to uh, Modern Warfare and any Call of Duty in general than uh, Destiny 2. Now what are some things that I would like for Call of Duty to have that Destiny has? Well, we talked about operators earlier. Uh, you can unlock them by doing the campaign and all kinds of different uh, like ways to unlock these different operators, but no one really cares. There's not a huge incentive for people to unlock these operators. And I think one big indicator of that is the fact that uh, the last statistic I saw online back in November said that only 30% or so of players had completed the Modern Warfare campaign and that most players never even touched it. So if Call of Duty was to make operators have some sort of an ability, now I don't mean like a super ability, because then it wouldn't be Modern Warfare, but maybe something, I don't know, like you get an extra perk on your weapon, or maybe you get an extra, I don't know, just something that kind of like, not like super ability, but like a little bit beneficial, like you get an extra attachment, maybe you get to have two field upgrades, which are kind of like their supers, just give you a little like field enhancement, like uh, maybe extra ammo, something like that. And so if the operators had something like that, that'd be pretty cool and give more incentive to try and actually unlock these things. Otherwise, uh, there's more stuff that Call of Duty does that I wish uh, Modern Warfare did. But there is one last thing I wish Modern Warfare had. I wish they had a more competitive mode. Destiny has a very broadly, acce widely accessible competitive playlist that most people at some point or another or at least try to do or wish they had people to play it with 
because there are incentives for playing competitively. Whereas Modern Warfare, best as I can tell, there's not much of a competitive playlist. The gunfight's kind of competitive, sure, because it's 2v2. Once you're dead, you are out. But there's nothing that's like comp competitive points outside of those tournaments that you can get into. Because they do, they do have tournaments that like if you're good enough, your team can get in there, win some money. But that's about it. Whereas Destiny, anyone can play competitively and they all have very high rewards for doing so. So that is a perfect tie-in to talking about the Destiny. So we're going to kick it off by looking at some of just the basic multiplayer options and what goes along with it, with the Destiny P Crucible, since maybe not all of you are Destiny players. First and foremost, well, I guess not foremost, but the first thing to notice is in Destiny, the multiplayer uh, option is called the Crucible. And in this Crucible, this is your options of different playlists to choose between. Classic Mix is just kind of a random conglomeration of like control and team deathmatch, that kind of thing. Then you've got on the very top two playlists that are rotate depend upon the week. So the showdown, and then on the left, you will see it's called Supremacy. Those are for the week of leading up to December 30th. On tomorrow, December 31st, every Tuesday, these those two playlists switch out in the rotation because Destiny runs on a weekly rotation. Call of Duty is more on a like, with their seasons on like a, every couple of months or so rotation. Destiny has that as well as every like week. Then we have the competitive mode that I was talking about earlier. It's called survival. You have an option if you are with some buddies and you have a squad and you guys are like, hey, it's it's squad night, let's go. And then you can load into there. And if you are playing by yourself, you can still play competitively. And the idea with this playlist is that everyone is a solo player and so you're less likely to get stomped. Then they have elimination, which is similar to competitive, but it falls under the generic multiplayer scoring. That's something else you need to keep in mind when you are playing Destiny, or if you're thinking about Destiny. There are two different rank systems for Destiny 2. You have Valor, which is just kind of generic, not competitive at all, and then as you play, you get points. You don't really ever lose points until you reset your rank or prestige if you're thinking in uh, Call of Duty terms. Then you have competitive. Competitive is uh, points when you win, you lose points when you lose. So the more you win, once you get to 2100 points, you can lose points and start off with less points than you, or end with less points than you started your gaming session with. And then you also notice as I was scrolling through the different playlist options under the Crucible that there are not nearly as many options or as a wide variety of specific options to pick. Those top two, Supremacy and Showdown, they always like rotate so you can only pick those. You will always have Rumble, which is free for all. And you will always have control. Now, Iron Banner right there is a once every month or so event. It is semi-competitive in which uh, Guardians, their power determines how much health and how much damage they can take when fighting another Guardian. So it's kind of an incentive to play the whole entirety of the game as opposed to just the Crucible. But since we're focusing on PvP and not the other aspects of Destiny, we're not going to touch on Iron Banner more than that. But just here's a quick look through your options again. All right, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how you can level up because it's also different than uh, Call of Duty. Now, this is way more complicated with, with Destiny, so I'm sorry we're taking more time talking about how this all works with Destiny. There's just more parts to it, whereas Call of Duty is very straightforward, which I think is why a lot of people tend to like uh, Call of Duty inherently a little bit better. So we have a vendor called Lord Shax. You can pick up bounties from him. When you complete these different bounties, you can rank up. And there are that last little slot on the right, you get to pick up more bounties. So when you finish the ones in your quest slot, which will be strong before too long, you can come back to Lord Shax and grab more. Whereas Call of Duty, you are limited to those like three a day and that's it. And so you can really feed into your Crucible rank. And now, we're going to talk about your character. Remember how in Call of Duty that your operators don't really do a whole lot, but they have different ones? Well, in Call of Duty, you have different weapons, you have different characters, you have different subclasses. And in the Crucible, one of the most notable things is you have these pinnacle and ritual Crucible weapons. So the Revoker was the sniper up top. This is the Recluse. That is the Not Forgotten, the ever hunted for Not Forgotten as well as these Komodo 4FR, which is from this season. You have weapons that are designed inherently to be better in the Crucible than other parts of the game that usually have a lot of prestige with them when you complete that weapon. You might have remembered me talking about 
wishing there was some incentive for getting operators for like the oh dang factor well for destiny there is a ton of oh dang factors if you get killed by someone who's not forgotten there are very few people that have not forgotten due to how difficult it can be to attain it. So there's a there's and the same thing with recluse. At one point, recluse was very hard to get, and uh, mountaintop was another one. So there's and then there's these different emblems and titles that go along with crucible. We could literally probably talk for three hours about the intricacies of all this stuff. But we're gonna leave it at there. That there's these different quests for weapons. There's different bounties, and you have those playlists that are options. Okay. Now for the characters. Um, I started in the match because this is another internet difference between Destiny and Call of Duty. Loading times take forever if you guys are noticing. Call of Duty is pretty quick. Uh, Destiny, for some reason, even just pulling up your character can take a while. So right here on screen is my Titan. He is one of three character options. You have a Titan, a Hunter, and a Warlock. Each character comes with a different set of abilities and supers. If you, if you will, than, uh, than the other. So like Titan, for example, has a, a bubble shield. You can drop down like a shield that completely protects anyone that is inside of the shield as well as provides some different extra buffs like more damage and more health. And then within each of these different supers, like, like the purple, the arc, and there's the, the solar, like orange looking one, you have three different super trees you can pick between. So this is part of why Destiny can get so complicated compared to Call of Duty is because not only do you have three characters with different abilities, each of those characters has three different types of supers. Void is purple, arc is the like blue, and solar is like the yellow orange. And then each of those has three different trees within that. And now you have exotic armors, as you see the helm of Saint 14, that buff your different super options. So like this helmet, really only works well with the bubble titan option that i was just talking about earlier and then you have another chest exotic called the hollow fire heart that really only works at all with the solar super and then each of these armors have different stats you can see the energy and you can see kind of down there the little gray boxes those are modifiers you can put on your armor so not only does your armor have different perks that inherently come with it you can put on perks of your own choosing to match your play style or your preference or whatever and you have to level up your armor in order to use no more than a total of 10 energy and if you have your armor at 10 energy it is masterwork i hope that makes sense if it doesn't make sense and you guys want to know more, please comment down below and I can do an entire video of like Destiny for Call of Duty players. Maybe that'll be the next video, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just spitballing here. But like Destiny can get super intricate. All right, now guns, guns. Okay, so in Call of Duty, you have you guys just have ammo like you don't really have to worry about different types you spawn in with pretty much the most you can have them uh without using a perk and that's it but with destiny you can make your ammo do different stuff and your grenades do different stuff with this lantern of osiris the this is an artifact that started with the last season so it's relatively new to destiny 2 but you are able to give yourself better targeting so like more aim assist you can make your grenades do more damage or do different kinds of buffs for your teammates all kinds of things that really change your gameplay and again the lantern could probably be a video all by itself about what you should go for what you should look for and then we have the actual weapons themselves assuming you don't even put on like the artifact over there on the left you can see i've got on what is in destiny called the pulse rifle in the very top slot it is a three round burst weapon then you have a shotgun i have which is in the middle which is one of the ritual weapons which is one of those quest line things you have to do and then the bottom is a heavy rocket launcher which is truth now why do those things matter when you're playing uh crucible multiplayer well the anything with like that little eye symbol is primary ammo so you almost always will have plenty of it anything with that little green symbol you see under the shotgun is special ammo so you only spawn in with two rounds and you have to pick up more ammo as you go which influences the kinds of mods you put on your armor so you can pick up more of that special ammo and then that bottom you see the little purple with like the three lines through it that is heavy ammo that you only get from a very specific heavy ammo box that spawns in a set amount of time in the match so it'll be like every minute and 45 seconds some heavy ammo might spawn in and you only get one round 
And that is really like the most nutshell I can give you. Like summary about what you probably need to be aware of if you're considering playing Crucible in, uh, in uh, Destiny 2. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about the gameplay. In Destiny 2, due to all the different abilities, like the supers, the grenades, grenades recharge, so you can get multiple grenades in one life, not just by throwing one, and then you can't get any more back like in Call of Duty without a munitions box, you cannot really camp. Some people are able to kind of do it, but it is pretty limited. It's very difficult to camp because people um, will see where your body is at because Destiny does not do a kill cam like Call of Duty does, but instead when you're killed, it will highlight in red the enemy that killed you and zoom your camera over to them. So if someone's camping, you know exactly where they are at and you also get told what gun they were using. And so like if they use a sniper rifle, you're like, oh crap, I got to adjust for a sniper rifle. And in Call of Duty, it's not as difficult to, to to not know what weapon people use when they killed you due to how universal everything is all right and we're gonna kind of try to wrap this up here thank you guys all so much for sticking through to uh towards the end of this video but the last couple of things you gotta make sure you keep uh, track of if you are playing destiny is pay attention to uh like things like sniper rifles for example the fewer rounds that sniper rifle has the more damage it does however you will almost never be able to body shot someone and kill them from full health like you can in call of duty so you need to be really good at headshots because that's the only really guaranteed way to get one shot one kill outside of things like shotguns so that's just something to keep uh keep in mind is that you definitely headshots matter headshots matter a ton destiny also does things like time to kill so like certain weapons will have one speed of time to kill other weapons will have others so like which one should you use and pair it together and you're for trying to fight others and it just goes on and on and on and on <laughs> we're gonna cut it cut it off at there all right here's my conclusions about what i wish destiny would bring over that call of duty doesn't oh, i really wish i really wish that uh destiny did not rely so much on like individual servers. It causes so much cheating that is able to happen because it's based on individuals. So like people can do things like live in the same house and match make together for the purpose of grinding out to get a not forgotten or to get whatever it is they want just to rack up wins for whatever reason. Like, the network connection is horrifically horrifically manipulable into you, your own favor. Some of that can happen with, with Call of Duty, but since it's dedicated servers, it's a lot harder, it's a lot more trackable by the Treyarch and all those other people that do Call of Duty, so it's easier to punish those who do manipulate. Whereas Destiny has had, basically since day one of Destiny 1, cheaters have been able to cheat and more or less get away with it, unless the community or some famous streamer or somebody it's like, hey, they're cheating. This goes to a whole lot of work and like presents evidence to Bungie and then they ban them. Uh, so like, that's just something I wish. I just wish Destiny would do that. Otherwise, I really like where Destiny's at. Um, some, to some degree, it's kind of annoying having to grind for that weapon as opposed to Call of Duty. Basically, everything works. Like It doesn't matter a whole lot what you have as long as you can point and shoot. Whereas Call of Duty, because time to kill and damage and headshots, it, it can be very difficult to use just whatever gun you happen to have on you. And so people will have like crucible loadouts, which has caused the creation of a whole bunch of apps on phones where people can customize and make things automatic and whatnot. So anyways, I hope this video helped you guys out with just kind of knowing the differences between the two. I totally think Call of uh, Destiny is way harder only because you have to have more knowledge. You have to understand how all these armors and weapons work together. You have different roles on weapons, like that bygone's there um, that I talked about earlier I can have like a billion different roles. It makes it one person's bygone vastly different than someone else's bygones. And it just, it just gets nuts. And so you have to be able to know how to have your armor mod, and you have to have resources to create energy for your different slots and all kinds of stuff that makes Destiny just a lot more knowledgeable it's you have to get really really nerdy to be really good and efficient at destiny whereas call of duty you just more or less log in just point a gun and you're good to go thanks so much for watching guys i am church of caboose have a great week and happy grinding y'all